Oh, cool. Well, that's a big change in setting. Hi there, friends. Today I'll be doing something a bit different, which is human interaction. <laughs> I mean, uh, collaboration. I'm collaborating with another YouTuber. So, YouTuber I'm collaborating with today is Rose Ox. You should go check her out. She's a really good artist. Her channel focuses a lot on painting and vlogs. Actually, why don't I just let her introduce herself? Hey, I'm Rose and welcome to my channel. If you don't know me, I am a full-time student and aspiring artist. And I love making videos like this because art is literally my life, my passion. And so welcome to my channel. If you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe to see more because I do post every single week. Usually it's lifestyle, art studio, college, vlogs, but I also love doing videos like this where it's all about the art. So welcome to my channel. All right, thank you, Rose. Thank you so much for the lovely introduction. As I said, Rose Ox, go subscribe to her channel right now. You can pause this video and go subscribe. So what are we doing together? Well, we decided we're gonna challenge each other to do the random color palette challenge. That is when you just generate a random color palette and then you paint something that uses or focuses only these colors. I'm thinking probably the best approach to it is to do a landscape for me, but we don't like easy approaches on this channel, right? So I'm gonna do a character. No matter which colors I get, even if they are the ones I hate the most, I'm gonna make a character based on these colors. All right, let's go. To generate my random palette, I use the website called Co Coolers. Colors? I think coolers. Uh, it's very simple. You just hit space on your keyboard and it gives you a random color palette. And that's the one I got. I got two shades of light blue, one purple, and two shades of dark green. The blue is just blue and a lighter blue. <laughs> and the green is same thing, a green and a darker green. And the purple in between. It's very nice, very cold. It is really in my comfort zone. After that, I just do simple color swatches to make sure that I have the right colors on hand and that I can even reach the colors that I got. I'm using for that my Kuretake palette, which is very great because it has a lot of colors in my disposal. Though it will not be the brand I will use for my actual painting. So I got light blue, a lighter blue, a purple with a little bit of a gray tint, a green that is also has a bit of a gray tint, and a very dark green with a bit of a bluish undertone. Very nice foresty colors. My next step is to do the concept art. Basically, I just open my sketchbook, glue my color swatches at the top, and just start drawing whatever comes to mind. I was thinking maybe a fairy, like a blue fairy with a dark forest background. I thought at first maybe I should make her skin blue, but then, and her, her purple, but then I thought that maybe uh, instead I should make her dress blue. And I wasn't exactly using only the colors I got, I just based my composition and character on the colors. I did add some colors in between and some additional shades just to make it more realistic. I'm not sure if that's cheating or not, but uh, I don't know. Rose, you should judge me on that. Once I was happy with the concept, I started sketching it on my transfer paper. This is not exactly a necessary step when you do watercolors, but I like to do that because then I don't have all the additional pencil lines on my expensive watercolor paper. I like to complicate things for myself a little bit. Basically, I just sketch my character on the transfer paper, make sure I have all the details in place, all the uh, proportions are correct, and generally, like, making sure that I am happy with my drawing and with my character. After that, I cover the other side with some graphite, tape it to my paper, and go over the lines with a pen. I'm not gonna say that you have to do that to have a good painting, it it's really, really depends on your own work process or and, um, how much time you're willing to dedicate to it. Uh, but this is just something that I like to do because then the result is much cleaner. Alright, the transfer is done. 
it is now painting time with a side of strawberries. I do my usual process, which is starting with the background and then slowly moving forward closer to the viewer. The background of this painting is just like a dark forest scenery with a little bit of the sun shining through. So I start with a light blue around the fairy's head and then I add glimpses of yellow. These will be the leaves with the sun shining through them. After that I add some light green and slowly work my way to the darkest green in my color palette. I don't worry too much about details because the background of this painting is supposed to be a bit blurry. The focus after all is the fairy and the background is just there to add some mood to the painting. One of the probably most effective ways of getting rich and very vibrant colors with your watercolors is to slowly add the pigment instead of just slapping it on the paper right away and calling it a day. You work with layers. You just add the first layer of your dark green and then another one and another one and another one until you reach the dark shade that you want. I waited a little bit to let the background completely dry and I moved on to my fairy. This is still technically the first layer of this painting. I wanted her skin to be light peachy with a bit of pink and blue highlights. So I did a light wash of her entire face, let it dry, and then I started adding shadows. The light in this painting comes from behind the fairy, so the f side of her face that is turned towards the viewer is engulfed in shadow. To achieve that color, I just mixed a little bit of purple in her skin tone that I already mixed beforehand. The next step is the dress, which is light blue, the two light blue shades I got in the random palette. The thing though, it was actually very challenging to mix them. I sat for quite a while trying out my different brands and just different watercolors pans I had on hand, and none of them really matched the colors. A lot of them were a bit too cold, some weren't light enough. I even tried to mix in a bit of green to make it a bit a warmer tone of blue, but You'll see me just give up at some point and just straight up use my Kuretake color because that was the closest one I have. I let my second layer of green dry and then I started working on details on the character. I added another layer of shadow, this time a bit warmer tone and a bit more towards the red shade. I then painted her lips and I added a little bit of blush. This is still not exactly perfect, it's still in the ugly stage, but I promise you it will start looking much better once I work on it for a bit longer. It was also at this stage when I started to add the strongest shadows, for example on her nostrils, her ears, the corners of her mouth, and under her jawline. That is the part that is the darkest. And now I'm coloring in her hair. I usually keep the hair for a bit of a later stage because that is pretty much the transitional part between the background and the character. Her hair is light purple, which I reached by mixing my Daniel Smith Wisteria shade as well as a little bit of purple and Payne's Grey. Once I finish the first layer of hair, I am pretty much done with all the color blocking part. And now I just have to add details, just add lots and lots of details and slowly build my way up towards the very vibrant colors I want to see in my painting. I don't really have any comments for that, so enjoy the time lapse.
The bouquet of flowers she's holding was a bit tricky to paint because it's a lot of very small objects condensed together so I had to be very careful and that took a lot of concentration. To kind of ease my work in this case I did limit my color palette and also you know so it matches the rest of the painting to just purple flowers and a bit of light pink. The dress I designed for my fairy is intended to be a bit transparent and that is visible on her sleeves that I will later fill a bit more with gouache. And I decided why not add some glitter? So I used my Daniel Smith pearlescent watercolors just to add a bit of a touch to the dress. And now comes my favorite part, final touches. I add her eyelashes with a pen as well as the shadows in the corners of her mouth and paint the flowers in her hair. I also wanted my girl to have some freckles so I just add dots of reddish brown and then make them a bit more transparent by adding water and wiping off the excess pigment. And now it's time to paint the ornaments on her dress. I wanted a color that will still be visible but at the same time not one that clashes too much with the color palette. So I'm mixing sort of a white gold, just a little bit of the metallic white with a little bit of gold. I'm using my super thin brush to create the ornaments. It is a pretty opaque watercolor so I didn't mind that though blue underneath isn't perfect. After that, I open up my Hemi gouache set and probably for the best part of this painting, I start adding highlights to her face and after that I mix some colors that still match into the color palette. I just did the light blue and the light purple and started painting her wings that I also intended to be transparent. So I just keep most of the pigment to the outer part of the wing and as I get closer to the character, I don't exactly water it down but just kind of let the um, let the brush empty itself if that makes sense i just don't add any more paint i just do the brush stroke and let it become transparent on its own as it gets closer to the character i started with the light purple but then after it was dry i added a little bit of white and some of the light blue and it turned out stunning i also added a bit of glitter to keep up the magical fairy vibe I think it was last summer when I made a review of this Hemi set I have on hand and a year after it is still pretty good. It looks a bit cracked but just add some water, let it reactivate and it's almost as good as new, very much usable. Though despite all of the good things I just said, I am thinking about getting maybe better quality gouache, at least just a tube of white because I often find myself using white for highlights when I work with watercolors. Once the wings are dry, it is pretty much done. It's the end. It's time to cut her out. For this painting, I used my Stonehenge block, which just has all the paper glued, so that's why I have to cut my paintings out with a palette knife. The benefit though is that I don't have to stretch my paper. I sign my painting, and with that, my fairy is completed. Well, didn't this turn out lovely? 
I am very happy with this painting. She is adorable. Well, thank you so much for watching, friends. This is the end of this video. I'll probably do this challenge again because that was actually kind of fun and the colors I got are are cheating. They're, they're just absolute cheating for me, let's be honest. So I'll absolutely do it again. You can challenge me to something else. Please do. Just a short small reminder, go subscribe to Rosox right now. Go do it. She is a great artist and you should support her. While you're at it, you should also subscribe to my channel if you're new here. Leave this video a like. Likes keep me very motivated and oh boy do I need it these days. Also, while you're down there, open the description box. That's where I have all my socials. I recommend you follow my Instagram where I post absolutely everything. I'm also streaming on Twitch doing digital art roughly twice a week. If you want to support my work, my Etsy shop is also linked below as well as my Patreon. Stay happy and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.